on RC Kicks today, we're putting this carbon in this car. Stay tuned. Oh, we really love a bit of carbon. Hi, and welcome to RC Kicks. On today's show, well, we're back working on the Kyosho Riri Phantom. Beautiful car, absolutely adore it, drives lovely. But what am I gonna do today? Well, we are fitting a full carbon set to it. Now this is from H2RD. They don't sponsor the show, I am purely a customer, but after seeing these, I just wanted to show you because I was blown away by what I got. They offer basically a full set. You can get a top deck, the chassis, and the front uh, suspension steering um, brackets, there's two of them. So really with this kit, you can turn your uh, Phantom into a total carbon chassis. Now the um, Phantom is a 112 kit 30635B. It comes with FRP chassis as stock which is fiber reinforced plastic, which is a composite made uh, material with polymer mix reinforced with fibers, usually glass. So it tells me. So you're pretty light and very strong anyway, but if you love a little bit of carbon like me, like uh, if you're a bit of a carbon whore, yeah, that's me, I like it because it's so pretty. Uh, <laughs> Then uh, I saw these. Now you would expect a full set of carbon for this car to be expensive. And I have to tell you, no, not even slightly. The chassis, the brace, and the top mount, and delivery, under 30 quid. I kid you not, from Hong Kong, this company hates 2 rd I'll put a link in the description and I'll put some pictures up of their website. Uh, are selling the whole set for basically 284 Hong Kong dollars, which when I uh, translated it into UK pounds, I thought it was wrong. It's like 27, 28 pound. And so it was so cheap. I was like, I'm, I'm going to get it. It might be junk. But uh, for that kind of money, I'll give it a go. So it, it obviously takes a while to get here from the UK. So don't expect super fast be with you in two days. I think it took about three weeks in all to come. But it also comes in a nice box wrapped up well. So uh, packaging is good. The actual what you see here, the presentation, you even get stickers is great. So uh, I take my hat off to them. They are really knocking it out of the ballpark. Now these are, I'm going to give you some of the blurb. It's a carbon fiber, but it's Japan Toreyuka carbon fiber. No idea if what that means. Uh, it's two millimeter chassis plate, basically. Um, so yeah, right. What we got to do first on the show is I'm not sure whether I've got to strip the whole car down or whether I can just remove certain parts. So I'm going to get my tools out. I'm going to open up the uh, body. We'll take a good look at it and then I'll come back to you about what's the plan. So let's get ready. Oh, carbon. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay. After having a look at this chassis, it looks like I'm going to end up dismantling most of the car. I think I'll go in from the bottom to see if I can change the bottom section first. The one that's worrying me the most is the bottom uh, steering mount. I'm not sure if I can go in from underneath, just change it, put it in, come on the top and then change the top deck. I have noticed that I've soldered the electronic speed controller to the motor and the wires pass through the center of the chassis. So I may have to unsolder them as well. Yeah, there's not a lot of space in this car, so uh, yeah. Okay, looks like we're stripping it all out. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna weigh it now and we can see what it weighs as it is and then I'll weigh it afterwards. But uh, hopefully what I'll do is I'll weigh individual, e uh, each carbon part individually and I'll weigh each part individually from the uh, FRP as well. So you've got to know exactly what you're gonna get, whether you just wanna change one part or do the whole lot. Right, so the chassis is currently sitting at 793 grams without the body. If I put the body on, it pushes it to 872. So there you go, there's the markers of what we've got at the moment. Let's strip it down and uh, see if I can change the parts without dismantling everything. Wish me luck.
Now obviously it would be easier to do this when you built the chassis so if you're thinking about getting one of these cars get the carbon as well. Delivery times can be a bit long so it's best to order that first um, otherwise you'll be sitting on your kit waiting for the carbon to arrive. Now I was a bit worried that I was going to end up having to dismantle the whole car but you can actually do it in stages just like I'm doing it now um, if you take your time and you're gentle with it. The first thing you've got to do is remove the two main pins that go from the top to the bottom. There's just little clips. Then you can actually unscrew the top deck. There is two little brass uh, ends. When you remove the top plate, be careful because the uprights, there's a little plastic o-ring that sits underneath the top deck. You need to replace those back again and then you can just do up the bolts. Once that's done, everything's secure again, you can flip it over and then it gets a little bit easier again. You've just got to remove the front bumper section. There's only two bolts that hold on the body pins. Once you've removed the body pins, there's just four bolts to remove to gain access to the underside of the steering and the C-plate. The C-plate is held in place with this steering screw that I'm removing now. Once you undo that, you can slide out the C-mounting plate. The underside of the chassis can be moved quite a bit, so you can actually get an Allen key in and remove the two bolts that hold the bottom section in place that you can see now. Remove the bolts from each side and lift out the underside tray. As you can see in the uprights, there's two little plastic washers. Make sure you put them back with the brass ones as well. Line them up and put the bolts back in place. Don't move things around too much and you can get away with it. It's not that difficult. That's the hard part done. Now we're just reassembling. Return the two bolts that hold the lower chassis in place. Do up the nuts on each end. Take the C plate, place it into the chassis. Now you need to put the bolt in that holds the steering in place and clamps the C to the chassis. Now that's the front, upper and lower swapped over to carbon as well as the seam bracket. We now turn our attentions to the rear of the chassis. It's a simple four bolt to remove that and then you can pull off the lower chassis. I've actually got my receiver stuck to the chassis so I have to disconnect that as well. Once that's removed, we can simply put the carbon one back in place. Return the four screws from the back mount. Once you've done up all four screws, we can turn our attentions to the front of the chassis again. You can now refit the four main screws that hold the chassis to the steering. Don't forget to refit the steering pins. There's one on each side just behind the front steering section. The last thing to do with the front is to fit the body pins back and the front bumper carbon mount. That's the chassis and all the steering changed to carbon. All we have left to do now is change the top deck, which I thought was going to be quite easy, but actually turned out to take longer than changing the whole chassis. Now there's no particular order to this. It all depends whether you have soldered the electronic speed controller to the motor while feeding the wires through the top deck. If you haven't, it is super easy. If you have, like I have, you obviously got to desolder the wires so that you can feed them through to remove the top plate.
You don't have much space inside the little car, so it can be a bit of a faff removing all your electronics to free the top plate. You have to transfer over the three rubber bungs that were on the top plate from the original kit. They can be a bit fiddly to push out without tearing, so go easy, be careful. I used a Phillips screwdriver and slowly pushed them through. Now we're on the home straight, so we're just fitting the electronics like you did originally. I decided that I was going to adjust my chain as it was a little bit loose at the same time. Can you spot my little mistake? Can you see it yet? I fitted the top plate without placing the chain above it. So I had to undo the top plate to slide it out the way so I could get the chain over it. It was tight enough that I couldn't feed it over the top. The electronic speed controller I have in this car is the Performance One version of the Koyosho electronic speed controller. Basically, it's the manufacturer of the electronic speed controller and Koyosho just rebrands it and charges you a little bit extra for it. This is a slightly higher specification than the Koyosho one, so I can highly recommend this one over the Koyosho stock one. Now normally you would trim down all your wires to be exactly the right length for a car like this but as I move electronics around when I'm doing different builds and things like that I tend to leave my wires at their stock length so it can be a bit of a mess and sometimes it can be a bit of a faff um, but that's why my wires are all so long. Right, just some final cable management and we're almost done. All in all, not a difficult upgrade, as long as you don't make a few silly mistakes like I did. It took me about 45 minutes to do. Right, I think it's time for some glamour shots. Bring it on! I think you can all agree, it's a nice looking upgrade, that's for sure. But does it save you any weight? Well, let's find out, shall we? And there you go, she's all done. How did I find it? Well, it was actually easier than I thought, apart from a few little mistakes that I made that I'll impart to you. So if you decide to do this, watch out for those. And the first one is this top plate has a direction, it's not universal. It has to go on one side um, because the servo's on that side. Don't put it in upside down like I did. What I actually did was I took the bits and pieces off of the original plate and I was putting them on the other one before I fitted it. That was the mistake. And then when I went to fit it, I realized I'd put them in upside down, so I had to change that. So that was the first mistake, but that only cost me about four or five minutes. But I made a bigger mistake in the actual top deck it's cut out like a triangle in the carbon one it's slightly different when i was putting it together i thought oh they've put extra holes in the top i'll run the wires through a different hole totally forgetting that the battery slides in there so i'd soldered everything up and then i realized uh, yeah that's not going to work so i had to unsolder it again and then move them back to the middle section so if you're going to fit this run your wires through the middle section here because of the battery not these ones here um, apart from that not so bad uh, changing over the bottom of the car and the lower and the upper steering was actually quite easy when you flip it over just do it gently and you don't have to dismantle everything at the same time i um tightened up my chain a little bit it was a bit loose um, a lot of people when they see this car they think why have you done it you shouldn't run this across the top deck it's rubbing that's exactly how it was designed believe it or not in the kit you actually get a little tiny set of stickers that is hard plastic and the idea is you put it across the top deck, that's why I went and got the extra bits I had left over from last time, to put, so you put a bit of it on the top deck and you actually stick a piece of it on the battery. 
Now, one of the things I found that was really nice was when they made this top deck, the original top deck has these small holes here, which they want you to use this tape. So you actually pass the tape through the hole and you tape your battery up. But that's a terrible idea because when you want to charge LiPo, you don't want to charge it in the battery very often, let alone leaving it around with the LiPo battery in it. And if you uh, if you use the stickers and you keep taking them on and off, they just don't work. So that's a terrible design. Um, but you can, obviously, like I've got, got the Kurosho uh, Velcro straps, which I picked up uh, off eBay. But the problem is that the holes are designed for the tape and the actual straps are thicker. So getting them to feed through crunches them up a little bit and they don't work brilliantly. It's still better than this rubbish tape idea, but um, luckily the top deck in the carbon one, they actually make these holes bigger. So the straps fit perfectly. So that's definitely a bonus. So I'm really chuffed about that. Um, and they sit really nicely. So if you do the carbon upgrade, get a set of these Velcro straps, makes your life so much easier. Um, so apart from that, right, let's look at the numbers. So I've weighed everything. So I'll go through every part individually, tell you what the grams difference between the original one and the carbon fiber one. Now, my scales are not perfect. They're just kitchen scales and they only work to the gram. So I can't give you the two points, whatever gram. It's just one gram or another. So it's not perfect, the, the weights I'm giving you, but uh, they're good enough as a guide. So let's start with the chassis. So the original plate chassis was 37 grams. The carbon fiber one was coming in at 30 grams, which is a seven gram saving on the chassis plate alone. Then you've got the top deck, the top deck was coming in at 22 grams and the carbon fiber one was 16 grams. So that's saving you six grams. And that's actually higher up as well. So that's pretty good. Now there's a couple of little tiny pieces. There's a little bracket that fits underneath the chassis. So you would kind of include it with the chassis and it comes, these two parts come with the chassis itself when you buy the carbon fiber one. But I broke them down for you. The C plate, um, is three grams and the carbon one is two grams. So obviously there's probably a little bit of wiggle room in there because of my scale precision, but it's definitely lighter. The smaller part, which goes at the front of the car, they were both reading at two grams. And I guess that's where you're getting down to my, um, my scales are just not precise enough to tell you the difference between a, a two gram and a 2.4 gram. Anyway, um, the front, uprights that go on the steering the what did we have the top one was six grams and the bottom one is five grams um, they are actually different and there's different holes cut in them as well so that's why there's less material so they're they're fractionally different the carbon ones were both four grams each and that saved you three grams um, so a total saving of originally, it was the car was 637 grams. After the carbon change of everything, it was 622 grams. That's 15 grams lighter between the two. That works out to be 2.35% weight saving across the whole car, obviously minus the battery and the body. Um, that's 15 grams and it costs about 28 pounds. So at 15 grand saving for 28 pound, you're looking at one pound 87 or one pound 86 and a bit uh, per gram. So one pound 87 a gram saving is very good. Very, very good. So if you're racing this, you definitely want to be upgrading it for that kind of money. Um, next, I would like to get hold of a set of titanium screws for it. That would be really interesting to see how much lighter a titanium screws would be. Um, if you know where they sell them as a pack, um, put a link below. Uh, I had a quick look around and there's a few Kyosho sets, but I haven't seen a, an exact one for this car yet. So that would be cool. Um, also, I think some titanium uh, wheel nuts and whether there's actually a uh, titanium um, rear uh, drive uh, shaft, I don't know. So comment below if you've seen that, as well as whether they make these parts in titanium. That would be pretty cool. Um, so put a comment below, what do you think? 
Good idea, bad idea. I guess it's really, there's two people that are gonna buy this. One is the racers because they wanna save some weight. And two, it's for people who really love this car and just want to make it a little bit more special by putting a carbon chassis on it. And I can't see it doing any harm, which is kind of me really. Um, as for from a, from a uh, torsion point of view, I honestly can't say whether it's any worse or better than previous. Um, I honestly, there's no way for me to test it really. So whether you end up getting lighter, but you get more flex in the chassis, that's, I cannot tell you. Anyway, thanks very much. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.